Hello friends, in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how to get paid to be a travel influencer. I'm gonna to talk to you about why uh, influencer marketing doesn't work. And then I'm also gonna show you my biggest goal for this video is why right now is the best time to be alive and why you should become a travel influencer and become our affiliate. So anyways, um, you know, we all know that right now we're living in some crazy times, but I kind of look at it like a, a big car wreck just happened. And you know when a car wreck happens, everybody slows down and looks to see what's going on. But as soon as you pass that car wreck, literally everybody just starts speeding. I don't know if it's just me, I'm sure it's not just me, and, and I typically go past the speed limit. I'm like, those cops are busy. They're just taking care of other stuff. I'm just gonna fly in. So that's what a lot of people do, I'm sure, because I've seen other people pass me when I'm doing that too. So I know I'm not the only one. So basically, the companies and the people that move past this pandemic um, as fast as they can, they're just gonna dominate in the next two to 10 years. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, we don't know when this whole thing's gonna end, but when the dust settles, it's going to be crazy it's going to be very busy and good for everyone i believe so uh, but before we get started and you know <clears throat> i want to say about uh, who this program is for uh who it's not for so first of all if you're a newbie and you've never sold anything online that's completely okay this program is really designed for anybody um you know so even if you're like me uh you know you've tried a couple things uh, maybe some things work, some things haven't, or if you're a seasoned pro, um, you know, and maybe you're much better at this than me, this would be a walk in the park for you, and it'll just be easy for you. But I'm also going to tell you who this program is not for. This is definitely not a get rich quick scheme. This is not for lazy people. It's not for negative people. This is not for impatient people. So. I just want to get that out of the way, uh, but I wanted to also introduce myself. Uh, my name is Gaspar Michelle, and <clears throat> about 12 years ago, I started selling insurance. Before that, I managed restaurants for about 10 years, um, restaurants, bars, and nightclubs. So <clears throat> basically, managing was really easy for me because I loved it. It was a lot of fun. Um, I loved all the people I worked with. And, and I put the fun in functional alcoholic. <laughs> it's basically what I did. And, you know, not when I really worked at the restaurants, but when I got into managing bars and nightclubs, I definitely um, indulged myself in some of the um, stuff I probably shouldn't have. And, and that's what I really noticed is the more uh, reckless I got, the, the better I did, which is completely idiotic. So I had to leave the industry because I just got my, I just kept getting more and more reckless, started drinking more and more. But really too, uh, you know, a lot of people started telling me, I need to grow up, I need to find a real job. So that's when I started selling insurance. And you know, when I first started selling insurance, it was actually a lot of fun. To me, it was just like going on a scavenger hunt, trying to find people who wanted to buy insurance. So it was a lot of fun. But then, you know, in the first, uh, you know, seven years, that was all I did. But then I started to get burnt out as I started to get more, um, you know, I started doing more middle management stuff, started doing training, started doing recruiting, started doing all the busy work that's, you know, that needed for an insurance business to grow and, and thrive. And so I started just kind of getting burnt out. <clears throat> so about five years ago, that's when I started taking like really just side jobs just to kind of keep me out of trouble and keep me busy and also put some extra money in my pocket. I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, if you know anything about insurance sales, typically your sa your sales and your income increase, but uh, mine pretty much stayed the same. Uh, primarily because, and what I realized is because I, I really just never had like an identity shift. I never looked at myself as a, as a, as an insurance agent. Um, <clears throat> I kind of just looked at myself like a, I don't know. And I, and I said this before that I, when I was 18 and I managed restaurants and bars and and, and uh, just different service industry type jobs. I, I said I was 18 for about 10 years, so I just had a lot of fun. Uh, but <clears throat> I felt like when I started selling insurance, I was just like a kid, like an 18 year old kid pretending to be an adult. Like I felt like I was just, just didn't really fit in. Uh, but <clears throat> I still did okay, mainly because I just put in a lot of work. Like the grind didn't bother me. Like I could make, I was a guy that could make like a hundred sales calls. I was that guy that could go knock a hundred different businesses doors, you know? So like, even though I had to work a lot harder than everyone else, like it just didn't bother me. Like I was like, well, if this is what I gotta do, that's what I gotta do, you know? So, but like I said, I, I just kept hitting that glass ceiling primarily because it, it just, 
know, I didn't love it like I should have. And, you know, so it was just, <clears throat> you know, like I said, I was, I felt like I was just spinning my wheels a lot of times, but every time I tried to leave the industry, I'd always make some extra sales. It was really weird. So I was like, well, maybe God wants me to, I don't know. But, um, you know, and so that's what I did for a while. And then about two years ago, or, you know, right before the pandemic hit, I mean, I was really burnt out on selling insurance. I had three jobs at the time. I was selling roofs, I was selling insurance, and I was even working at a restaurant, <clears throat> you know, just to keep enough money going in. You know, I lived in Houston at the time, and you really you need to have money at all times if you live in Houston because you want to go out, you want to, you know, pay for gas and all this other stuff. So, you know, I, I just did what I had to do to survive, you know. But <clears throat> when the pandemic hit, um, I had a roommate and you know, she was a friend I went to high school with. She was a sweetheart, and she was actually feeding like three to six homeless people a day. And you know, she was using her money, but uh, <clears throat> she wasn't, you know, so it really didn't bother me. But after three to four months of it, um, you know, the, the house started smelling like homeless people because typically on a, on a normal day, anywhere from one to three of them would spend the night. And then even the leasing office, they, they I didn't know this, but they gave us multiple violations. She obviously threw it away. Finally, one day they called me and they said, hey, look, uh, <clears throat> you know, we've given you multiple citations. And I was like, what? And I was like, I didn't even know. And so the guy just listed like a laundry list of things. And I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. First of all, she was staying with me and she wasn't on the lease. All these other people were just coming in and coming, going and leaving and stuff like that. And keep in mind, guys, this was when the pandemic first started. So like, you know, I felt bad for them because they didn't have food, you know, and so I, and I knew a lot of them couldn't be out working and, you know, anyways, uh, but they, they basically threatened to evict me and I, and I didn't know the legality of it. You know, I knew they weren't evicting me for, uh, for um, any other reason other than lease violations. I didn't know if they could or not. And so uh, basically what I did is I just said, hey, I'm just, oh, cause the guy told me, he goes, we don't want your money. We just want you to leave. And I was like, oh my God, like I, I really couldn't believe it. Like I was so offended, but like, I didn't know what my options were. So at the end of the month, I just came to Mexico and I came to Cancun and, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna figure out a way to make a living here, figure out a way to earn you know, some money here. I knew about marketing, you know, and I had a little bit of money, not a lot guys. I, I honestly, when I showed up, I had like $200 in cash. I had some credit cards and I had some money owed to me. Like I said, I sold some roofs before I came. I was actually expecting to get about $6,000 from the roofing company. It ended up being about $2,000. And I actually thought I was only gonna be here for like a month or two um, because I thought that's how long it would take them to pay me my $6,000. And I, I really just kinda need to get out of town for a while. But then I really just loved it here. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna figure out a way to make this work. So I started talking to local businesses <clears throat> and I started offering them marketing services. And honestly, guys, I felt like I was a time traveler talking to these businesses. They're like, well, why do we need marketing for? Like, can't we just wait till they show up? And I'm like, no, like, well, can they just like, um, you know, the, you know, just ask for their um, their WhatsApp number and then you can have contact conversations. But it's like, no, like, I, I don't want to I don't want to do any of that. Like, we'll build you a website and then you know, bring you customers and then they'll, you know, buy from you online. And then when they show up, they were, they already paid for it. Like, wouldn't you rather have that? They're like, yeah, I don't really know about that. And then when I started talking to them about, you know, what my program is, I was going to use influencer marketing and they're like, oh no, we've been burned by influencers. They, all they want is a free meal and they, they, they don't give us anything in return. Like we've done that before. We're not doing that. So what I started doing, just started making YouTube videos, uh, started growing my Instagram page, my Facebook page, things like that and I was like eventually they'll come around and so and basically in the past year and a half I built a lot of really good relationships with some people uh, built with local businesses and, and really I you know I really just want to blow this program out because you know if you if you've watched any of my other uh, YouTube videos uh, you know I love supporting local business and I want to help them as much as I can especially coming out of this pandemic and it doesn't help or it doesn't hurt that we're here in paradise so uh, you know, so that, that's why I created a funnel. If you don't think about funnels, it's it's not a problem. You know, most of the people, most of the business people I just spoke to didn't know anything about funnels. But one of the things I did is I created a giveaway funnel where basically they, they opt in uh, or, you know, give it their email. And then we have a couple different uh, giveaways we have going on right now. Or I know we have one, but I'm going to launch a couple more. So maybe by the time you're watching this, I already have the other ones launched. I have tons in the work, tons of 
offers, tons of packages that are in the works that we're working on. So I'm really, really excited about this. Um, but uh, but before we get into that, I kind of want to talk to you about why influencer marketing doesn't work. So I told you before, you know, most influencers, they just want freebies. They want, um, you know, free food or free hotel stays and things like that. And that's not what this program is about. Uh, we're really about, um, you know, helping small business by bringing them customers. And then we'll pay you a commission for, for helping us do that, you know, by sharing this with your um, with your circle of of followers and you know your circle of influence is what I was trying to say but anyways <clears throat> the reason it doesn't work for most influencers is most companies will give you like a promo code so it's like if you go to xyz.com and put in promo code one two three you'll get 12 percent off and what typically happens is somebody goes to xyz.com and they either don't use the promo code or they don't buy that day and then by the time they go they, they may not use your promo code so what ends up happening is you're sending people to a website and then they, they may never buy from that particular website so that's why it typically doesn't work for a lot of businesses and we and i tried that um you know um you know i, I forgot to mention this but five you know one of the first things i did is i, I helped my ex start a, a dress boutique and I helped her out and I, you know, that's when I started working with influencers and we gave away like six different dresses and of those dresses, only one uh, person brought us in a sale. Luckily she brought us in like 10 sales. It still didn't cover the cost of the dresses we gave away, but it did show that it would work at, you know, at a larger scale. You know, if I had 600 dresses to give away, you know, it might've balanced down the end, but we, we were a small business. We, we couldn't afford it, you know, to, to do all that stuff. And so, and like I said, guys, we're really just trying to help local businesses, um, you know, overcome this pandemic and just kind of, you know, get a get some additional sales coming in and just grow the the, the tourist industry here in Cancun. Um, if you've ever been here before, this tur tourist industry is a huge part of the business, but we also want to work with other surrounding cities like the smaller towns like Holbosch and uh, Bacalad and all these other places. So we definitely, definitely want to <clears throat> expand into other markets. But I started in Cancun because it's, I just went off of keywords, what people search for. More people search for Cancun than they search for uh, Puerto Morales or Cozumel or things like that. So, but, <clears throat> So another reason uh, influencer marketing doesn't work is a lot of people say it's oversaturated and, and they under deliver. You know, like I remember, do you remember like when Fit Tees came out, how every person was giving out Fit Tees? Like, did anyone ever buy any Fit Tees? I don't even know. Did anybody lose any weight off of Fit Tees? Like, I don't even know. But that's what really happened. Like, that, that was kind of when influencer marketing started kicking in. And now there's other companies like Fashion Nova, Bang, and all these other companies that use a lot of influencer marketing. But for a small business it's really hard to do because it's not it's just not profitable starting out for a lot of businesses and that's why people like to stay away from it so but there are some core concepts of affiliate marketing that do work uh, first of all people like to buy from someone they know like and trust and so that's why I've, I've made so many different YouTube videos I want people to get to know me trust me uh, you know I'm not just some random youtuber making videos like I'm actually going to these local businesses I'm doing food reviews I'm giving tips I'm taking the tours you know that way it's not just some random person that you're you know buying tours from or you know taking advice from it's somebody who's actually been there and it's trying the restaurants out and like I said I have 10 years of restaurant management so when I go to a restaurant I can literally tell like wh what kind of restaurant owner the business you know the business owner is I can tell like how my food is prepared how long it's been sitting there uh, how well they train their staff but I don't get into all that in the food re reviews just because it's like like I said, I'm trying to help small businesses so I'm, I'm really just kind of highlight the good ones and if I go to a bad restaurant I don't even review it. I'm like I'm not gonna give you any publicity because I don't I don't I don't want to like it's not in my nature to be a hater so anyways but <clears throat> here's what you'll get if you do join our program first of all I'm gonna give you uh, a five-night hotel stay now these are vacation vouchers, so there, there's no timeshare presentation, there's no like uh, additional things you need to do, there's no wheels or hoops you need to jump through, uh, but there, you do have to pay the 188 uh, resort fees, and, and I just signed up for another one. I'm, I actually made a video right before this, um, so you might be able to see this now when you're watching this, uh, but uh, they, they have upgraded their, their program, but I won't get into that now, but it is a really cool hotel program that it's just super easy that for, for us to be able to, to give these vouchers away, to, to, to give away winners, people that buy 
out our tours. Uh, it's a super cool deal, but like I said, I'm not gonna get into all that here. This is really just about our program. But the second thing you're gonna get is you're gonna get an affiliate link. So what that means is you're just gonna be able to share that link to your you know, to your followers, to your email subscribers, put it on your blog, whatever you have that's available, just put it on there and then when people buy, you'll be able to earn, you'll earn a commission off of it. So what I did is I made it a first tier and a second tier commission structure. So basically what that means is if you send me your link and I buy it, <clears throat> and um, uh, you'll earn a commission, but let's say I decide to become an affiliate and I share the link with somebody else If they buy you'll earn a small commission off of it, too. Now. This is not MLM uh, I'm not hating on MLM, but I know some people like it some people don't like it But this is not about just recruiting a thousand people you can if you want to but that's really not this what this is based What, what I decided the reason I decided to do that is first of all it, It's built into the software of the website. I have so I was like I yeah, might as well do it uh, but second of all I know that there are people that you know, you maybe you have a friend that has like a million followers, and you're like, "Hey, well, join this program with me. Help me out. Let's do it together." Like, you know, you know that way. I, that's that's kind of the incentive I have. If you if you know somebody else who has a bigger base than you do, if you recruit them. You'll you'll earn commission off of off of what they do. Uh, but <clears throat> but like I said, it, it's a very, we try to keep it simple, guys. Uh, for instance, like if you if a family of four buys a tour from you, uh, you're gonna get a, a, a buys a tour from the link. Family of four buys four tours, uh, you'll get one hundred twelve dollars. You know, not life changing, but it will help out. You know, if if a couple of uh, if a couple buys three tours, you get forty two bucks. Definitely help you out. Uh, definitely helps some extra, uh, give you some extra money. But like I said, even if like a solo traveler buys one tour, you'll still get seven dollars. And guys, like I said, we have we're gonna have tons of different tours options. We're gonna have tons of different packages. Uh, but we're just kind of rolling a couple things out right now, uh, just slowly, as so we can kind of build a base of what what's gonna work, what's not gonna work. But I do highly recommend. Um, if you are going to do this this program with us, I recommend doing a 10-day viral launch strategy. What that 